commentator is James Coy. Here is where the victory is born, in the factories of American industry going full blast to turn off the planes. The world has never seen such a miracle of management and men, shattering all industrial records to create a mighty armada of the air almost overnight. More than 7,000 planes a month in war plants, many of which weren't even in the blueprint stage at the time of Pearl Harbor. Here too is where the victory is born as thousands of the finest young men of America train and study in aviation classrooms for mastery of the air. But they have to master the link trainer and its dizzy gyrations before they even leave the ground school for actual practice on the flying field. Then the thrilling order, pilots man your planes. These student pilots are the cream of the nation that taught the world to fly. Off they go into the wild blue yonder, fired with determination to be the world's best air force. Now they peel off for practice bombing. Look out below. They say they can drop a bomb in a barrel at 20,000 feet, and here's proof of it. A whole stick of bombs for the grinning Tojo down below. Right on the nose. Now they're on a bombing run for another target thousands of feet below. Perfect coordination of pilot, navigator and bombardier is essential. More than a well-drilled team that is good, it must be perfect. And this isn't just good. It's perfect. At an airbase in the Southwest Pacific, planes are kept bombed up to the hilt and ready to fly. Ammunition belts for fighter cannon are loaded with shells. The Air Force Command stands by for a reconnaissance report from a patrol plane somewhere to the north. And here it comes, Jap convoy leaving Robo. On a score of dispersal fields scattered throughout the New Guinea area, American and Australian flyers get the order to strike. Fighter and bomber pilots, navigators, gunners, bombardiers, man their planes, determined to stop that convoy. Off they go, winging their way to battle. They fly low to test a new bombing technique. There's a group of flying fortresses. Every plane crew searches the Bismarck Sea, watching for the first sign of 10 Jap warships and 12 transports laden with enemy troops. There they are. And this is the strategy. The 22-ship convoy is bound for Lai and Salamawa, hard-pressed Jap bases on New Guinea. The planes will sweep in from every side and flying low, frequently at mast height level, drop their bombs with crushing accuracy. These pictures explain the historic achievement and give occasional glimpses of action covering many sea miles. With the ceiling so low, the enemy believed himself safe. There's the Jap transport. Sometimes the bombs explode almost in the pilot's faces. Watch this. There's a 10,000 tonner going up in flames, full of Japs who will never reach shore alive. Fighter planes sweep in with cannon blazing, stopping enemy gun crews. 
here's where that training pays dividends. In a sky full of flying steel, a miracle takes place. Only three Allied fighters and one bomber are lost. But these pictures give some idea of the way in which 102 Jap planes are destroyed or damaged. Bombardiers blast everything afloat, making 80 direct hits on the 22 ships, dropping a total of 226 tons of bombs. 15,000 Jap soldiers and the entire naval personnel of 10 warships are destroyed as ship after ship is left burning and sinking. This is a small down payment for Pearl Harbor, Wake Island, Bataan, and Koreador, and just a foretaste of things yet in store for the warlords of Japan. Now for a scoffing dive, wing guns blazing, pouring destruction on crowded decks. One after another, they are mopped up in a victory so sweeping it sounds incredible. Last plumes of smoke rise like black salutes to Japanese ancestors. Still the fighter planes bore in without mercy. And here's a salute for Hirohito, for an enemy despised by every decent nation, as a triumphant air force heads for home. Said General MacArthur, we have achieved a victory of such completeness as to assume the proportions of a major disaster to the enemy. A great combination, these Australian airmen teamed with the American Air Forces. Typical of these two rare breeds of fighting men are Australia's commander, Black Jack Walker, Lieutenant Gordon McEwen of New York, Major Ed Lerner of San Francisco, and Major H.E. Hastings of Texas. Major Hastings explains the victory. The results obtained cannot be attributed to any one individual or a group of individuals. It was more like a, a smooth play on a football field. The, uh, every man knew his job and every man did his part. The coordination between the, the RAAF and the American Air Forces was really perfect. It was a cracker show from beginning to end. When it comes to a scrap, we Aussies don't want any better cobbers than you Yanks. We're tickled to death to know that you're right behind us. Oh yeah, Black Jack? With you, boy, not behind you. Together they make a great team, the Aussie and the Yank. Backed up on the training fields of America by thousands of flying men preparing for many more such triumphs as the Bismarck Sea victory.